imagining the kingdom is a lot like desiring the kingdom in the sense that both of them are sort of hybrid books. Uh, I guess they, they reflect their author a little bit in that I, I try to s occupy a space uh, sort of between the academy and the church. And, and I'm trying to do work as a translator, uh, but I'm also trying to do original work as a scholar. And um, so I've tried to create books that inhabit that space. There's a danger to that, which is that you can end up frustrating both of those audiences. So folks who are engaged practitioners, uh, you know, don't have a lot of patience for long footnotes with German philosophers' names in them. I get that. Uh, at the same time, my scholarly colleagues um, are sometimes uh, looking for a l few more footnotes that fill out the picture. So what I've tried to do in Imagining the Kingdom is just sort of own up to that, write a book that meets both of those audiences, and I even pro provide a little bit of a how-to guide at the beginning. Here's how practitioners should read it. Um, they should not worry about the footnotes. Don't, don't get yourself distracted. Plug through the material. Uh, especially enjoy and I hope appreciate what I'm doing in the reflections on popular culture and film and novels and music. And then look at the philosophical pieces as providing kind of a toolbox for you to understand practice. Um, for scholars, I'm asking them to, for just a little bit of patience as I'm trying to talk to a wider audience. And then I'm asking them to please take the time to dive into the big long footnotes where some of the detail that they're looking for is embedded. So there's a conversation going on on the bottom of the page and there's a conversation going on at the top of the page. And uh, I hope some of the cues early on in the book help both of those audiences to find it uh, something of value to them.